Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Rave Culture Podcast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. We have a really fun episode. I'm so excited to get into this. I feel like this is going to be one of those topics today that we're going to have a lot of feedback on. A bit controversial, but I'm excited. I'm welcoming that this week. And if you could already tell by the title, today we're going to be talking about festival flag and totem etiquette at music festivals, at raves, in the EDM community. This is definitely one of those hot topics that I think a lot of people feel pretty strongly about, or you may not know that much about it. And today we're going to educate you a little bit fill you in on what's going on and what the conversation is about for this topic and just chat all about it. I'm not sure how long this one's going to be. I feel like this might be a shorter episode, but we'll see in a little bit. Um, but before I get into really like introducing the topic, I have to start out by of course saying thank you guys so much for listening every week. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for clicking on the podcast and checking it out and giving me a chance. Uh, I absolutely love recording this every week. It's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, it really just lets me have deeper conversations about the EDM community and hopefully spread more awareness about how awesome this community is. And I mean, I absolutely love music festivals. I love EDM. It's given my life so much. So I just hope to share that with other people through this podcast um, and through my YouTube channel. If you guys didn't know and you're not subscribed over there, um, you can go check it out. It's under my name, Emma Capotis. I have more festival tips and advice, um, makeup tutorials, EDM vlogs, like all that good stuff is up over there. So definitely go feel free to check me out on YouTube. What else do I wanna cover? Um, thank you guys so much for rating and reviewing on iTunes, for subscribing on Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever it is that you're listening on. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, also sharing this on your Instagram stories and on Twitter. I appreciate it so much when you guys screenshot and share, tag me in it, um, at Emma Capotis or at Rave Culture Cast if you wanna tag the podcast. Uh, that's where I try to keep you guys updated on things that are coming up. And I'm always, always looking for submissions for upcoming episodes. I've got a couple um, I'm going to talk about today. But yeah, stay tuned on Instagram. That's usually where I post like polls and questionnaires and things like that when I want to get your feedback and your input. But that's what I have to say here at the top of the episode. Um, before we get into it, I'm actually, so I'm recording on a Monday today. Usually I try and do this on Sunday or over the weekend, but it was a busy ass weekend, you guys. I went and saw Chris Lake back to back Fisher in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Mirage. What a show. Oh my God, what a good time. Um, I posted a vlog on my channel that should be up by now because it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, you guys. Um, we're midway through the week already, so you guys are halfway there. <laughs> But yeah, I had a big show this weekend. It was late. I think I went to bed at like 4 a.m. on Sunday and just had a lazy Sunday. So we're a little late to recording the podcast uh, this week, but this is one of those episodes I've been waiting to record and I'm super excited about it. But yeah, I mean, that show was awesome, you guys. Um, quick recap on it. Uh, it was completely sold out. Chris Lake, Back to Back Fisher. Uh, doesn't happen very often. It's their like under construction special event and it was one night only in New York. And I mean, the crowd was crazy. I knew it was gonna be crazy. It was a 19 plus event, a lot of bros, a lot of people rolling, a lot of just like craziness. It also downpoured for about 45 minutes and the venue was outdoors. So it was like complete and utter chaos. Uh, luckily the venue gave out ponchos and there was some like indoor space to go hide out in, but uh, we were completely soaked. So that was interesting and the set was so good. They played technically, I think it was like 1 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. So we saw like a solid three hours of their set. I mean, it was incredible. Chris Lake's one of my favorite um, producers, artists, and Fisher is just such a good time. He seems like the coolest dude. So anyway, if you guys wanna see a recap of that um, show, go check out the vlog on my YouTube channel. What else? Um, I'm going to be on vacation next week, you guys. I don't know if any of you guys care, but just keeping you posted. Uh, there will still be a podcast next week. There will still be videos. I'm trying to pre-plan everything so that I can actually take a break. I don't talk about this that much, but I love working. I love doing this stuff. I'm all night, every night, on the weekends, I'm always working on the podcast or my channel. 
and next week I'm gonna be with my whole family my boyfriend and I kind of just want to relax <laughs> and take a break I don't know the last time I did that I'm still gonna bring my laptop with me like who am I kidding but um, and I'm gonna do some vlogs of the vacation too hopefully you guys are interested in that so yeah there will still be content but I will be away enjoying some time off next week I'm so so excited uh, I haven't seen some of my family in a little bit so it's gonna be a good time Alrighty, let's get into some EDM news. I have a couple things that have sort of accumulated here. Really want to talk about Lollapalooza. I'm going to save that for the end because I have a couple heated thoughts on that. <laughs> but just a couple quick things. Um, Freaky Deaky is coming up. That is a Halloween music festival in Texas. Uh, one of the things I think I saw about it is that they're getting five stages this year, if I'm not uh, mistaken so it's expanding which is super cool Halloween is my absolute favorite holiday I get so into it love Halloween uh, I don't know if I'm attending any festivals yet right now I'm uh, <laughs> I'm at max capacity with my vacation days and my budget but I would love to attend one one time um, but I am selling tickets to Freaky Deaky so you guys can DM me I have reduced price tickets for that event uh, and it sounds super cool it sounds like they're expanding it so that's awesome uh, I did want to highlight DJ Snake's album that came out. Uh, to me, it's just hot fire flames. So good. I mean, this was very anticipated. He's got some awesome collaborations on there. His song with Zoo, uh, the song with Mercer, Chami, and Mala is awesome. Great album overall. I really, really liked it. So if you guys haven't listened to it yet, definitely give that a listen. Check it out. And other big news, Ultra is headed back home, you guys. I'm making an excited face into the camera right now. <laughs> um, I'm recording all the podcasts now, if you guys didn't know. So if you prefer to watch me talk or just chat, you can check it out on YouTube. But yeah, Ultra is going back home, which is really exciting. I think a lot of people are pretty pumped about it. I'm sort of waiting to hear what changes there are going to be because I heard some rumors about there being a noise ordinance and that they had to have one less stage. So there might be some um things that they have to like limit the festival to but i think that they're just going to go all out when they bring it back home so that's going to be really really exciting it kind of makes me want to go back again because i went in 2017 when it was at bayfront and i had an awesome time i really liked the venue i liked being in miami so that's all exciting so we'll see what comes up i'm pretty sure tickets were already going on sale soon if not already um holy shipwrecked announced their lineup which was really really stacked um, again, it seems like they're still moving forward with their plans. It's at the um, Hard Rock in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I did a video on YouTube about this, just talking about some of the issues that they're up against. They released some official statements just dealing with the situation that's happening in the Dominican Republic. There were a lot of um, tourists who were uh, dying which is really fucking scary and the circumstances were a little bit fishy a little bit sketchy and they're still like investigating what's happening there so i don't really know what's going on i'm not going to go to that festival i would prefer to just stay at home avoid that kind of scenario but i mean it's an insomniac run event i'm pretty sure so i think that they are definitely trying to get to the bottom of everything and you know of course the the fans safety is of the utmost importance and the performers and everyone the staff that's all involved so you guys can go on their website if you want to read an official statement um from holy shipwrecked but i'm personally sitting this one out in other festival news another one bites the dust you guys woodstock 50 was officially canceled i'm pretty sure they were trying to find another location they originally canceled the festival that was going to happen this summer. They were looking for a new location, and I am hearing it is officially next off. So not surprised that that happened, but that kind of sucks. I know they really wanted to make that something special. All right, last thing up for EDM news. Uh, so Lollapalooza, guys. Let's talk about it. Um, I try to be careful about what I say about festivals that I have never attended because rightfully so you sitting at home listening to this or wherever you are you could easily be like people can't talk about a festival if they've never experienced it themselves which i completely agree i don't want to talk anything um to speak to the experience of going but there was multiple videos that went viral i'm sure a lot of you have seen at this point of a bunch of people rushing these fences outside the festival and collapsing them and just basically breaking into the festival for free and it was just like this whole complete 
chaos and then the friggin' security guard or the cop, whoever it was, the one person he stopped was a man with a prosthetic leg. And so everyone was like ripping on them, like really you stopped the one person who is like on a prosthetic that's kind of fucked up, but I don't think that they realized that when they stopped the kid. But anyway, so that just like sent shockwaves across, like it was on Barstool Sports, it was literally everywhere. That kid got in fine, so that's a good thing. But um, I think a lot of people in our community on more of like our side were, and some DJs were speaking out about it. It just is not a good look, period, at any festival that this happens at. I don't think the kids, I'm gonna use kids because a lot of them looked young. The kids that did that, I don't think that they are like, obviously they're not very plur. I don't think, you know, this wasn't an EDM only festival. This was an all genre festival, which is some of you might know I have issues with in itself. It sucked. I don't understand that behavior at all. I don't know if it's a maturity level thing. I don't know who raised you. I could go on and on. I think it's the most disrespectful thing in the entire world. I'm really sorry, but a lot of people paid a lot of money to get in there, to support the artists, to attend the festival, to feel safe, and to have people just be really sneaky and sketchy and just try and get away with things like that. Uh, that's absolutely not okay in my book. I don't appreciate it and I wouldn't wanna be friends with those types of people. Not my, not my cup of tea. Anyway, on the other side of the fence, <laughs> lol, a lot of people were saying, ripping Lollapalooza apart being like this festival sucks it always has issues the whole festival in general isn't good and again these are some people saying this who have never gone to the festival I think that it is what you make of it some people might love Lollapalooza because they like all different types of genres and it's in their city and it's just a good time and I've heard that it's run really well besides that they obviously beefed up their security by the fences but you know what, if it's not your thing, then stay home. Don't attend a festival like that. I've always been on the fence. I've never been to Chicago, so I was like, it would be really cool to go to Chicago, go to Lollapalooza, have a mix of everything. But after attending Governor's Ball for the second time this year and just seeing the stories coming out of Lollapalooza and the videos, like I think I've, I, I never like to say I'll never attend a festival, but I think Lollapalooza is like off the table for me. I just, it's, I'm pretty sure it's an all ages event, if not a 16 plus event. That's like a not my favorite thing. And I don't really like mixed genre festivals because I bring, I think that brings out uh, some shittier crowds. Um, so anyway, I don't really know if I would attend after seeing all of that, but I'm really curious guys, like send me any messages or DMs. Let me know how your Lollapalooza experience was. Um, for those of you who attended, I mean, I saw some videos. People seem to have an incredible time. The artists look awesome. So I don't know. I was watching the live stream and I saw a couple of the sets and it sounded amazing. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. It's really upsetting to see things like that, the fence crashing and stuff. Uh, you know, I worry about people on the other side of it. I worry about the safety of the security guards getting trampled, issues like that. So, you know, let's try and just be better in general. I know it's not you guys listening because you guys are the good ones, but... Uh, yeah, with the mob mentality, if you see things like that happening, don't join in on them. You know what I mean? Like stand up for people, uh, put your foot down and show that you have a standard. Uh, I've seen things like this, like at EDC with the shuttle lines, like people cutting and jumping over um, and just like kind of screwing everybody else who's waiting and that just feels shitty when you're on the other side of it. So anyway, that's all my thoughts on that. Now let's just like, let's get into the episode. I've gone on for long enough. Alrighty, so I wanna quickly just mention how today's topic came about. Besides obviously the fact that I've attended a lot of music festivals um, and I've just experienced some of these things, um, I am planning to bring a flag to Electric Zoo and to Imagine. I made one for Rave Culture Podcast, you guys. I'm so excited. Uh, I've never had a totem, I've never had a flag at festivals, but from some of my friends who are like content creators or social media influencers or whatever you wanna call it, um, I've just heard that it's really, really great having some sort of totem or flag so people can easily find you in the crowd. And if that means that I can meet more of you in person because I'm not just lost in a sea of people, then I absolutely want to do that because I would love to be able to have multiple meetups and even my friends, like, I'll get into this later, the pros and cons, but being able to find someone in the crowd via a totem or a flag is just such a good way to go. So I posted it in Reddit um, asking people what the best type of pole to use to have like your flag on. And I got like a lot of great comments and then all of a sudden the conversation just like twisted and 
it just became like an area for people to rant about why they don't like flags and totems and I just was like wait 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 I didn't realize people felt this strongly about it or had like such negative feelings about this stuff I was like this is a good one to talk about I kind of went on a rant on Instagram sometimes my emotions get the better of me <laughs> but I also did have a lot of people reach out to me with their personal opinions so the breakdown of today's episode i'm going to just describe what totems are if you guys are like super beginner you don't really know what i'm talking about i want to talk about some of my favorite totems i've ever seen because i have some good ones that stand out in my mind uh, and then i'm going to give my argument on where i stand with flags and totems and then you guys submitted emails and you guys sent me some dms and then i'm gonna wrap it all up with a nice bow with some etiquette ideas and just sort of like guidelines right i think it's just something that we could we could all learn a little bit more about right let's we all want to have a good experience here and uh, be kind to the people around us so we'll keep the etiquette for the end but let's just get started here okay so what is a totem obviously you guys know what a flag is um people can bring flags from whatever country they're from or nationality they are uh, a lot of artists have flags in their merch shops i brought a jaws flag to edc las vegas but i didn't put it on a pole i just like put it around wrapped it around my body and i was just sort of like holding it and dancing with it um you can make them there's like a lot of custom rave flag shops and yeah you can make something for your rave crew whatever it is you can do custom flags a totem is essentially um a sign that's basically fixed to a pole of some sort it's sort of like a, a beacon up in the sky you can get extendable poles or um i think it's a pvc pipe that you can use and yeah people can just be really creative with them you can make a sign it can be imagery it can be words a lot of them are like memes uh, positive or inspirational sayings on them uh, some people will make totems for like their rave family or their crew or their favorite artists I've seen some really funny ones about seven lions that I'm going to talk about and like I mentioned it's also like a beacon or a way to find people in the crowd much much easier so that's essentially what a totem is some of my favorite ones that I've ever seen, uh, I think, so EDC Las Vegas 2015 was my first major, major festival, and I just remember cracking up seeing all of the creative memes that people were making, and there was this one that was this cute, oh, if I have, if I can find the pictures, I'll put them up on YouTube, but um, there was one that there was, it was this little cat on like a scooter, and it said like, on my way to fuck your bitch, which was cracking me the fuck up. I mean, you gotta be like, be careful with the language. You don't want to make anything that's like super vulgar, but you know, teach their own. Um, I loved the missing Seven Lions milk carton totem at EDC because Seven Lions didn't play a set this year. That was awesome. There was one that was Pasquale Rotella's face. He's the owner of Insomniac and it said Pascal like rolling balls or something. I loved that. There was one that said crazy rave Asians. Uh, one, one time at EDC 2015 I think it was or 2016 it was this like old lady's face and it said EDM makes me moist. What? Sorry if you hate that word but it was fucking hysterical. I love anything that relates to The Office because that's one of my favorite shows. So there was one I think it said like drop, drop some beats. Or something and it was Dwight's face and then I think one of my favorite totems of all time was from EDC this year and it said raving is not a joke Jim and it was Dwight's face and he had like a camel back that he was drinking water out of I was cracking up when I saw that I loved it there was one that said like look at all these chickens which is a vine reference <laughs> and it was like a festival crowd uh, I've seen like a winter is here flag for my Game of Thrones fans. I, li I like seeing things that I'm like a fan of like whether it's a show or an artist. Uh, there was a totem at EDC this year that said hoes don't get cold which fit with the theme perfectly because it was absolutely freezing at EDC this year. And then just one recently I just posted it on Instagram somebody at the um, ABGT I think it was I forget what it was but they were at the gorge and it was above and beyond show and they had a below and nearby flag as just like a play on words. I thought that was genius. I loved that. And my last favorite one I want to mention at the trance stage at Quantum Valley at EDC this year, there was this really incredible totem. It was this like sign. Um, it was like a thin horizontal sign that had messages flashing across it that kept changing and you could text the number and put a message on it. It was so sick. Like whoever comes up with this stuff, you guys are so creative. 
but I loved that. It had some really nice inspirational messages and it like is so fitting for the trance stage. So I really, really thought that was creative and I loved it. Alrighty, so those are all my favorites. So here's here are my thoughts, guys. And again, I feel like I'm a very impartial person. I can see both sides. I have strong opinions, but like I can easily see both sides and I understand if it's explained to me well. But in my opinion, I am pro festival flags and totems. I think that they are an incredible expression of personality, sense of humor, artistry. Some of the things that people make are beautiful. I saw some stuff on Reddit from Electric Forest that looked incredible. People get so into it with like the LEDs and the lights and moving parts. And like I said, messages that get displayed on like an electronic screen. Uh, and I just the sense of humor that everyone has. I, I love it. I get a kick out of it It's one of my favorite parts of going to festivals is walking around and I'll always take pictures of Some of the ones that just like make me absolutely crack up and there's nothing like being in a crowd At one of the stages and you look up and you just see something that just makes you pee your pants laughing I just think it's the best um, And I like that people can sort of like have this personal expression and if you're proud of something or like you are in, you stand an artist you absolutely love an artist or you have a whole crew together and you just want to represent I say like go for it why why not I mean the whole EDM community is such a loving and welcoming place that I just think there's a place for it at festivals so that was that's my opinion on it um i think it's part of the humor i think it's part of the culture i've heard some comments some people wrote into me saying like it's a it's a more of an american thing it's not really a european thing which can totally be the case i haven't been to european festivals so i don't know but um in the united states in festival culture i do think it's a big part of it uh i love this is just a tip for any of you guys who are making totems i love when they're double-sided definitely try and do that if you can so that way, like if you're looking at the stage and someone has a totem that's kind of in front of you, you can still read something that's not just like a blank screen or a blank board that you're staring at. That's my that's my opinion and my thoughts on it. The only thing I used to think too when we were at these festivals is I always used to be like, God, it must be exhausting carrying that the whole time. That was the only reason I never did it. One, because I was traveling for the most part or taking planes and I was like, I'm not going to build a totem and like carry it on a plane with me. So that's all, one of the reasons I never did it. And then, yeah, I would see people carrying these like massive expandable poles and I'd be like, that's exhausting. Like I want to shuffle, I want to dance around and I don't want to just be like standing there with the pole in my hand. But I think if you have a group and you rotate who holds it, you can also get the expandable poles and you can take it down if it's a flag so you don't have to be holding it the whole time. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts on, are on it. Some people only bring totems to two of the days and not all three so that they can get a break but yeah those are i'm just sort of spitballing those have been all like my my thoughts about it but let's read okay i just have a couple of things that you guys said your thoughts from emails and dms jemmy said i'm all for totems i think they're fun and creative and an easy way to find your group but sometimes they obstruct the view of the stage i hate when i'm standing behind someone who has a huge flag or a totem and I can't see the stage, but I also really can't move because it's so packed. Uh, we're gonna get into some of the things she just said about the cons of it. I'm actually gonna read you guys all of the comments from the Reddit thread that I had posted. I think I had one email about it. Oh, this was a really awesome story I wanna share with you guys. This is from Brooke. She said, Hi Emma, let me start by saying that I love all of the EDM content you make, but your podcasts have become my favorite by far. Thanks girl. Uh, thank you for giving me something to listen to on my long car drives. I especially feel like I can relate to you, which is an amazing feeling. I wanted to write a submission for the topic of festival flags totems. Despite hearing people online give their opinion about why people shouldn't fly flags at music festivals, I started carrying a flag two years ago at Electric Forest. I'm from Michigan where Electric Forest is held, so I have a ton of friends that go, and the one thing that has always been stressful at Forest for me was finding my friends and keeping my group together. I thought a flag would be the perfect solution, and it has been. Each year I change the flag that I fly, I, I wrap light up neon wire around the pole in a color that matches this, the flag. This year I flew a custom Odessa flag that my girlfriend got me as a present. Before the festival, I will send out a picture to all my Forest friends and let them know to look for me and my flag. 
The amount of times my friends have found me by spotting it in a crowd is truly amazing, not to mention the new friends I meet when people walk up to me to compliment or talk about my flag. It lets me remain stress-free and go where I want to go, when I want to go, while also seeing all the people I love throughout the weekend. A quick story for you. Two years ago, I was waiting for Rufus de Sol to start playing and was flying my flag, wishing my friends were there with me to experience it together. In that exact instant, three of my best friends came running up from one side of me and two of my best friends came running up from the other side at the same time. We all hugged and couldn't believe we found each other in the nick of time. Then we all stayed together for the rest of the night and it was a moment I'll never forget. Another thing me and my friends like to do is what we called fishing. If we are at a set that we know a lot of our friends will probably be at, we'll walk to the we'll walk back and forth throughout the crowd from front to back with the flag. It's hilarious because by the time we get towards the back and stop and turn around, we have a line of our friends following us and we all get to enjoy the set together. I know there's a lot of controversy around flags and totems because people claim they are distracting or block their view of the stage, but I am always very conscious of where my flag is so that I'm not hitting anyone and oftentimes if I'm near the front of a crowd or in a crowded area, I will just put my flag down and enjoy the set hands-free. I personally love seeing all the flags and totems in the crowd at a festival. It just makes the whole experience that much more magical and gives you an insight on who else is in the crowd, much like the country flags people fly at Tomorrowland. I completely agree with everything she's saying. I don't think that the flags block my view from the stage as the stages at festivals are usually huge and if you really can't see you could always ask someone to put their flag down or just move to a new spot. Plus it is it really is cool to look at pictures and videos that artists post after the festival and see your flag flying high. I'm really grateful to have my flag and will continue flying it high at music festivals. Thanks for taking the time to read and keep up the amazing work with the podcast. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your submission. But I mean, literally everything that was said in this email, I completely agree with. I think it's an incredible way to find people. And it is awesome. Like I go up to people at festivals and I'll compliment them. I'll be like, can I take a picture with you? Or can I take a picture of your festival? I usually ask them. And I think it's just like, it's a fun thing. It's a way to meet new people, which is another positive. And I love the idea that you can just like walk back and forth through the crowd and just catch people as you go. I think that's awesome. I seriously like, I cannot wait to bring, I haven't gotten it in the mail yet. I'm like kind of nervous. I hope it comes in time. Um, but I cannot wait to like walk through the crowd and just see how many of you I meet. I don't know. I'm really, really pumped, especially cause it's not like, it's not a flag that represents an artist or I didn't want to put my name on it or anything like that. But the fact that it represents this podcast and like if you know you know if you're a follower or a subscriber you'll know what it is and that just makes me so so happy because this podcast feels like my baby so it's gonna be incredible just to like represent that up in the sky I'm so pumped I actually got I'm trying to find the Instagram handle I'm sorry if I don't oh it was um Alexandra Jones she sent me a beautiful photo of a butterfly totem that she made um for an upcoming festival it was so gorgeous and just i don't think i've ever said this because it's kind of weird but butterflies are my spirit animal i absolutely love butterflies i have a butterfly tattoo on my ankle i know i'm a basic ass bitch i was 21 at the time okay it was my first tattoo <laughs> but no i love butterflies i think they represent like a total metamorphosis of self and i just it's my spirit animal i love i love what they represent um, okay, so let's get into the Reddit, shall we? Let's spill some tea here because it got real interesting. So again, um, these are the pros and cons. I just posted about like what kind of flagpole should I use and then it just sparked some shit. So I'm gonna go down the line. This one says, I know this is not answering your question, but going off of some of the previous comments, I have rarely had a flag or totem bother me. Usually they're really high up anyways and doesn't block my view. It could also be that I'm 5'1". Personally, I really enjoy flags and totems when they're not massive and they do sometimes block visuals. There's so many funny ones. They also really help if and when your group gets separated. This one said, do people with flags not ever feel bad that they are blocking the view of potentially tons of people behind them? And this one said, or how about the idiots who put three flags on a pole? Shit is so annoying. Uh, this one said, I have to agree with this. I'm an avid totem participant and I never have my totem bigger than one foot by one foot cube with a four foot pole so I can put it down during a set. I can make camp in a crowd and stay for hours if needed and my friends always find me. I seriously don't understand the, f 
the flags. They block views and are hard to see at night. Most are not unique, usually a country flag, which makes no sense because at EDC we're all one and I personally don't care what landmass you came from. If you're going to make a totem flag, think about how unique it will be in a sea of flags. Hopefully you will stand out. Good luck. This is just constructive criticism. Don't take it personally. I'm sure your flag will look great. So that kind of, that comment, it didn't annoy me. It's a comment. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, but like just because you don't care where someone came from, like if they traveled from another country and they're like proud and they want to represent that country, like you fly that flag. You know what I mean? Like I don't really care if you don't like it. <laughs> I just think that's like weird. Um, I don't know. I think it's cool to be an international festival and, and show that like everybody can come from all different parts of the world and come together. So I don't know. I think it's cool to fly a flag from your own country. This one said small totems are totally acceptable. It's people who hold up a giant five foot wide Brazilian flag or something. Trust me, no one cares you're from Brazil and it blocks 10 rows back that I just can't understand. Why is holding a flag over your head even exciting? You're not the one who has to look at it. Again, I just think the people writing this, like that's just a poor attitude to me. It doesn't sound very accepting or very plur. I don't know, I think people are just excited about things. But anyway, so then, oh, I forgot I responded to that. I was like, I think people just want to represent something or they're a huge fan of an artist. I don't think it's coming from a malicious place. And they responded back to me. I never said it was malicious. I don't think it is. I think it's selfish and inconsiderate to everyone behind you. It's the same reason you don't fart in line at a food stand. Everybody, everyone behind you is victim so you can keep it in like a nice person. But it, again, it's just like the attitude behind it. I don't think people bringing flags and totems are trying to be selfish or inconsiderate. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's a weird thing to say about people. This person said it's part of the festival. Also, it could be a lot worse. It could be a fan or a whistle. <laughs> and then this said it's only part of the festival because selfish people don't think before they act. Guys. We're not out here trying to be selfish, okay? We're trying to express ourselves and like represent something that means a lot to us. So I don't get the selfish comments. Again, we're gonna talk, I'm, I'm gonna give all of you your opinions, like of course you have an opinion, but we're gonna talk about etiquette. There's a right and a wrong way to do it. I completely agree with that. So we're gonna talk about that at the end. Okay, been to plenty of, these are more comments, been to plenty of festivals, never has a flag bothered me, my friends are around me and the music can still be heard. I don't get people's fascination with I need to see the, the DJ. I kind of like don't want to read all of the super negative ones because I like to keep my podcast a very positive place and we don't got time for that. This was just like a huge rant people went on. Rocking out the massive stage with lights and visuals that the festival spent millions of dollars making for everyone behind you is such an unaware douche move. This person said, I understand that you don't need to see the DJ and that you just want to take some drugs and dance and that it's never bothered you. That's cool. More power to you. But if it's just about listening to loud music with friends, then we could do this at home where entry is free. There's no undercover cops and bathrooms are better. I go to festivals because I want to see the stages and I want to see the DJs. I spend hundreds of dollars on tickets, allocate a lot of time off, fly or drive hours to the venue, stand in endless lines, deal with porta potties and overcrowded stages just to be denied that by some guy who thinks the world just needs to know that he spends a lot of money on tickets and travel to be here. It's inconsiderate and annoying. Oh boy. People just like to complain, I think. There were a lot of people that were, and I don't know if I completely agree with this, a lot of people were saying like, oh, if you don't like it and your view is blocked, then you can move. I don't know if I totally agree with that because some of these stages, like you might have been there for a while and then someone with a flag or a totem came right in front of you. So it's like not necessarily fair to be like, you should move out of the way. So I do feel for people, of course. You know, I don't think that's necessarily fair either. This person said, I've always said flags and totems disturb the peace and disrespect anyone who actually wanted to see what was going on. Sure, I can dance with my friends, I'll get to that. But for a second, can I look at this sometimes multi-million dollar stage without a stupid eat ass poster or 15 of the same dead mouse flags? <laughs> you know, the eat ass posters crack me up though. <laughs> I have one from Izu that was I was dying laughing at. Again, we're gonna get into this. I think it depends on where you stand. If you have a flag or totem in the back of the stage, I don't see anything wrong with that. The people who are all the way up in the front, well, let's talk about it. I don't think it's not the best to be in the very, very front. These stages are massive, like 500 feet wide, like crazy shit like that. Like I don't think a little totem or a flag is blocking it. 
but it depends on how close you are to the stage. If you're up front, you're gonna be blocking some people's view. Oh my God, that just reminded me of a random story. This is a little bit morbid, I'm sorry. But at EDC 2018, Brady and Tara will remember this. We were standing very, very close up front at main stage for Jaws. And there was a girl who stood in front of us with the totem. And it was beautiful. It was in remembrance of her boyfriend who passed away. And like one, it was beautiful. It had like a long message in his photo. But like simultaneously, we had to move because it was so sad it was so sad and i like felt horrible for her and it was like to have him with her there but like after just staring at it for 20 minutes like i'm not gonna lie we had to move because we were like this is like too emotional like this is kind of a lot to take in so i don't know how you guys feel about that i know um you can't comment here but you can comment on soundcloud and you can comment on youtube so let me know what you think about that but it was a beautiful totem we couldn't stand behind her too long um because again we were also very close to the front so like we were basically staring up at it for like 20 minutes yeah and then it's just more people arguing anyway so those are all like the negative ass comments are they wrong not necessarily i think they have a point some of the time <laughs> Some of the ways that that was phrased, I think a lot of those people had like very negative attitudes. So I'm not a fan of that. But let's talk about the points that they were making about obstructing people's view, being repetitive, being pointless, being vulgar, things like that, that like aren't necessarily cool and like aren't the best for the community. Some etiquette rules, let's go into it. One, I would say try not to, guys. I understand if you absolutely love an artist and like you have a flag for Eric Prid, so you want to be up in the front, you're going to block so many more people's view having like a huge flag or a really big totem. Can you try standing on the sides, in the middle, by the sound booth, or by a pillar? Like those are already blocking people's view, so maybe you can kind of consolidate or stand in the middle or in the back. Um, option number two, which a lot of people were saying, and this is what I think I'm going to do at Electric Zoo and Imagine, um, I got an expandable pole. I'm going to use my flag for people, one, to locate me for the meetups, two, in the crowd, say my friends like need to go to the bathroom or want to go get a drink and come back. More than happy to pop the flag up so they can get back to us easily in the crowd and just walking around and stuff like that. But for the majority of the sets, I don't, one, I don't want to hold it the whole time in the air. So I'm personally gonna take it down and collapse it. I know you can't do that with totems. One thing a lot of people have said, like if you have a sign, rather than standing like facing the stage, you can tilt the sign so that it's more narrow and people can see around it rather than having it like very horizontal, like landscape style facing the stage. It takes up more um, space. So you can turn it so it's more narrow and people can kind of see around it. Don't make it too, too short either i'm five foot one but i know a lot of people were saying if a totem's too short you're gonna block so many people's view that way and again like be creative have fun with it do something cool that's like visually interesting um i'm again i'm a mom i'm a rave mom you guys know how it is i don't like the super vulgar totems like watch your language on them i don't think i i mean i'm not a fan of like the really sexist things on there people can get political do whatever like do what you want but just like try not to be super offensive to people of course uh this is a very like loving welcoming community so if you're a newbie here make something that's cool interesting funny a meme uh yeah do something cool i love the ones that say like come dance with us stay hydrated those are all dope like things to to remind people of like the positive side um the peace love unity respect plur totems those are always a great one. I'm trying to think what else. I liked there was one that uh, was a photo of Patrick Mahomes, who's the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and it said rolling with Mahomes. I thought that was a great one. Oh, and like the rolling balls, which is all the kids like rolling the balls around in a circle was fucking hysterical. I have a picture of that one. Yeah, so there's so many fun things you can do. There's a ton of inspiration online, on Reddit, on Instagram. So definitely if you guys are looking for some inspo, go check those out. I think that's all the etiquette I have. Um, I'm really curious to hear all of your feedback on this topic, you guys. Uh, I hope that I seemed fair in this. I'm trying to be unbiased. I can relate to everybody. I understand where people are coming from who are frustrated by it. But at the same time, I think if you're going to bring a flag or a totem, let's just try and be considerate of the people around us. 
you know, we all want to have a great experience. We all want to have a good view and enjoy our time and, you know, not be blocked by some obnoxious shit. So let's all just work together here. We can all make it a very positive space for everyone. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I feel like I'm missing something. I wanted to like go on and on about this topic. <laughs> But uh, that's like my proper totem etiquette and flag etiquette, I would say. Again, uh, look out for the Rave Culture Podcast flag at Electric Zoo and at Imagine Music Festival if you guys are coming. Uh, multiple meetups will be had. I'm super excited. I got to wait for like the festival maps and the set times to come out, you guys. But I will definitely be keeping you updated on all forms of social media. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys have not gotten your Imagine tickets yet, I have a code for 5% off. It's Emma5, E-M-M-A, 5, the number 5. So you guys can use that to get discounted tickets. What else is coming up? I'm also selling tickets uh, to Freaky Deaky reduced price. So if you guys are interested in that, hit me up. I have so many more too. I'm selling for like Imagine, Voodoo Festival, Life is Beautiful. I have a ton. So just DM me at Emma Capotis if you guys want any more information on that. For Electric Zoo, I still have tickets for sale. I have shuttle passes. I have ferry passes. So let me just, just let me know. Let me know what you guys need. I'm super excited about everything. Uh, one quick thing, I'm looking for submissions for upcoming episodes. So we have two topics. The first topic I wanted to talk about is how do you carry the plur mentality that you experience at music festivals into real life. So plur is peace, love, unity, re and respect. I know a lot of people can feel this sense of like overwhelming love and joy at music festivals. And I'm curious, like, how do you carry that into your real life? You know, what do you do or do you feel like it ends after the festival? Um, so yeah, please submit anything, any stories into raveculturecast at gmail.com, raveculturecast at gmail.com. Uh, submissions number two. Oh, and also you guys can send me voice memos. I would absolutely love to play your voice memos live on here. So feel free to attach that if you would like to do that rather than writing out an email and just like say in the email that you're like okay with me playing your voice memo on the podcast. Um, the second one I want submissions for is a topic that I've seen a lot and I thought this would just be really, really fun to cover on here. It would be definitely like another ranty type episode, but I want to know your unpopular EDM opinions. Guys, this has been a thread on Twitter so many times, but yeah, send in submissions to raveculturecast at gmail.com. What are your unpopular EDM opinions? And by that, here are a couple examples. People who say drum and bass is better than house music. All EDM sounds the same. Standing in the back is better than standing in the front. Like, I don't want to get too, too negative here. But anyway, I want to know your unpopular EDM opinions. And I'm just going to kind of see where you guys are all at. I want to know what you guys think of, uh, of the different genres. And it can be anything. So definitely send those in. Send your voice memos in. Emails to raveculturecast at gmail.com. Again, you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Emma Capotis and at raveculturecast if you want to follow the podcast. Uh, this episode will also be up on YouTube if you want to watch along with me here. Hello, I'm waving to the camera. Um, and feel free to check out my vlogs, all my other fun stuff. And if you guys want me to interview anybody or just have a conversation, somebody that you admire or love in the community, it doesn't have to be like a big name. It can just be another like raver that people know and you want to hear me talk to them. So please send in those submissions as well. I have like an ongoing list of all of the things that you guys send in to me. So I have everything written down so I don't lose track of anything. But I think that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully I'm not missing anything else. Thank you all so much for spending your Wednesday or whatever day you're listening to this with me. Um, please go and rate and review on iTunes. It helps us move up the charts and it let, lets people know what we're all about here. And uh, more than anything, screenshot and share this on your Instagram stories, on Twitter, tag us in this, and just spread the word. Uh, it means more than more to me than you ever know. So thank you guys for, um, for spreading the word about Rave Culture Podcast. All right, that's all I've got for you guys. I will be back next Wednesday with a new episode, even though I'm on vacation, yo. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.